Well, hello and welcome to Transform Tuesday. My name is Dave McCormick. I'm VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. And today we are going to be going over Alpha Transform for the next 30 minutes or so. I have a demo and I've got a couple of questions uh, that have been written in that I'm going to answer today. So let me get it, go ahead and show my screen. And if there's anyone out there who could just type into the questions box to let me know that my audio is coming through and that you could see my screen, that would be great. Excellent, it's coming through. Great, thanks very much. So today what I wanna show is a brand new, uh, is actually something in Alpha Anywhere, and it is a brand new control type for working with Alpha Transform data. And let me just scroll down here in my presentation and we'll get started. Uh, here it is right here. It is called the Transform Data Viewer Control. And it is a control that is used inside a UX component, uh, which you can use you know, for both web and mobile applications. And it lets you use Transform as the data source for, for viewing data. Um, and it also supports uh, parent-child relationships. So you can have really a, a complex data structure underneath and have it very, very easily uh, displayed. And I'm gonna take you through the process of how to do it. So to begin, uh, we have a really simple inspection form that I created. You may recognize this. Some of you who are at the conference, we actually built this at the conference and it was just for uh, an equipment inspection example. So basically all we're asking for is the name of the inspector uh, and then some information about equipment that's being inspected. Uh, there's an equipment ID, which we did as a barcode. There is equipment type, which we did as a list control, whether or not the equipment is working, we did as yes, no buttons. And then finally, there was a photo field, uh, so we could take a picture of the, of the items. And those were all contained in the data group, so we could put in as many inspections as we liked in a single form. So once that was created uh, and pushed up to the phone, it, it looked like something like this. So here is actually, this is a picture that was taken at the conference, I guess, of the presenter's table. And I made up a fictional person named Jim Jones, who's the inspector here, and there's his equipment and he has a power supply. And actually, he, we took a couple pictures of that. And if I went back into um, the management console, I would see the data that I collected right here. Here, Jim Jones's two pictures. And also, there's another record uh, for someone named, I think I came, came up with the name, Cindy Tressel. I just kind of made up that name. And so we have two, two records here. So we want to display these records now inside Alpha Anywhere in a UX component. So I'm going to show you how we go about doing that. The first thing we do is we build a list control. So many of you are familiar with the list control. It's one of the most important controls in the UX. And it allows you to um, view data. Um, and it often comes with a detail view, allowing you to change data. And often uh, it's populated using a SQL data source. Sometimes it's populated using uh, AJAX or using an XBasic function. You can populate it using OData data as well. But in this case, we're going to choose the transform option. And when we choose transform as the option for our list, we are asked for a couple of things. The first is the API key, which, by the way, this is a fake one. And we ask for a form ID, and this is the real form ID of that inspection form I just showed you a few minutes ago. And then there are a couple other things that we need to do to make this work. The first is we need to check this box which says get form definition. What that means is it'll take the JSON formatting of the form as it was created and brings it down to Alpha Anywhere, because Alpha Anywhere is actually going to use that form definition to display the data on the UX. The last thing we need to do is we need to go over here to this list layout tab, and we need to choose at least one field. In this case, I chose a field, uh, I, it's called field three, and this is sort of a cautionary tale because when you're creating your applications, it's really best to change these names to something sensible. As it turns out, the, the name of the inspector was what field three was. I never changed it. So probably what, a better thing to have done would be to fill out a sensible name here in transform. And then it would have been a sensible name here in Alpha anywhere. But anyway, it's field three. I went with it. I chose it. I added it to the list. And when I went ahead and previewed my UX component, this is what I got. I got a, um, a list control, which said inspector name at the top, and it had the two 
uh, tickets that were filled out, uh, the one from Jim Jones and the one from Cindy Tressel. So I could click on these, but I wouldn't see anything. I wouldn't see the form data because while this is a list which shows some of the data, what we're going to use now is that new transform uh, data viewer control. And we're going to add that to our UX component. So to do that, um, I basically went down here into data controls here on the left, and I chose more. And one of the new control types here is the transform data viewer. By the way, if you haven't been in this more section, they, we have a bunch of other really cool controls that you can use, including the audio player, the audio recorder and player, um, which you can build right into uh, your applications, um, step rater video, video player, um, and the semicircular number display, which actually looks really good when you're putting together dashboards. But I digress. So what we're using here is the transform data viewer. So we'll select that. And it's only going to ask us really two questions when we double click on it to configure. The first is, where is the data? Where are the data coming from? And in this case, we're going to not point directly to transform. Instead, we're going to point to the list that we added to our UX control. And that list is in turn pointed to transform. Once I tell it the name of the, uh, once I tell it I'm going to get it from a list, it asks me the name of the list. Uh, there's just a drop down here. I chose list one. I never changed the default name and then I'm done. And then when I go into working preview, what you will find is that when I click on a particular record here in a list control, over here on the right, my transform data viewer control now shows me the data that's been collected and it's even formatted the way you'd see it in transform central. So, so I didn't have to lay out all of these fields and stuff myself. I just had to tell it, just uh, display this form right here. Now, I did have some options when I set up the transform uh, control. Um, I could decide, I believe I can decide to exclude certain fields and things from, from the definition. The other thing is that the transform data viewer can be populated not just from a list, but you can actually point it directly to transform central. I've started playing with this. I haven't got this to work yet. But keep in mind that the data viewer is really meant for looking at one record at a time. So you won't be passing in the, the form ID, you'll be passing in a form instance. In other words, one particular form that's been filled out. So chances are you're going to be doing some programming to, to allow you to switch from form to form if you're not using the list control as the source. So, uh, and there is a, there is a uh, link down here, show methods for the transform data viewer control if you do want to do that kind of programming. So that's that. This feature is already available, but the ability to, uh, so it's already available in the official release of Alpha Anywhere, but the ability to look at parent-child uh, data and some other things is only available right now in the pre-release and came out in this morning's build. So I just wanted to share that all with you. The latest and greatest integration between Alpha Anywhere and Alpha Transform. Okay, so that wraps it up. Are there any questions on the transform data viewer? Doesn't look like it, but if you do have questions, of course, just go ahead and type them into the box. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I got. And the first question has to do with uh, if, if statements or if thens. And the question was basically, can I set up a form so that if an answer to a question is a uh, certain answer that it could that I can end up asking more questions. So I was trying to come up with an example of this. The one I came up with was the type of dwelling. Let's imagine you were doing some, maybe some sort of inspection of homes or apartment buildings. And so maybe your first question is, is this a house or is this apartments? And if it is apartments, you might want to know the number of units in the building. Now that question only makes sense for apartments. It doesn't make sense if it's a house. So here you want to maybe display this question conditionally. Let me go ahead and set that to a number. And to do that, let me go ahead and save this. We are going to put the question, the number of units in the building question, and we're going to enclose that inside an if. So to do that, I've selected the field right here. I go up to the plus button to add a new control, and I'm going to scroll down here to find if, and I'm going to use this little blue button called enclose. When I do that, it puts in a 
beginning and an ending if tag here for me. So basically we want to say if, now we put in, okay, so if whatever our condition is, is true, then I want you to display this field. Otherwise, don't display this field. So our test in this case is going to be if the type of dwelling equals equals, I know it's, it's two equals. Uh, we show you the example here. It's because we're using JavaScript notation. And we'll say apartments, apartments, then that will display. So let me go ahead and save that. And this is called the if then test. And I'm going to go ahead and push that up to the internet. I don't believe we can test that here. We need to actually test it out on the phone. So let me open up my phone and I will share that with you. Uh, let me just turn on mirroring here. Screen mirroring. Whoops. Just make sure I'm on the same network as my phone. And I am not. Hold on a moment while I connect my phone and my computer to the same network so that I can show you what I'm talking about here. Wi Fi. All right. And let's see, I'm connected here to, uh, what am I connected to? Alpha Guest. All right. So, Alpha Guest. All right, great. So I think this is going to work. Screen mirroring. Here we go. Excellent. Oh. Come on. There we go. Now let's go into transform. And we'll test out our if then. Uh, so we're going to go to add form. I'm going to refresh the form definitions because I've just added this form. So it wouldn't be in my phone yet. And I'm going to scroll down to the if then test. And right now it says type of dwelling. I'm going to click apartments. And when I clicked apartments, we saw what happened there. The number of units in building field appeared. And if I clicked house, the field disappears. So that is, that's basically if then in a nutshell. And you can, you can do more than just hide a single field. You could hide pages of fields or sections or data groups or anything you want. Um, I just happened to, to use a simple example where I just hid that one field. All right, so next question is, um, let's pop over here. Oops, sorry, let me shut off my air server here so it's not in the way. Do, 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 do. Stop, ah, there we go. The next question we had was about uh, how to mail, automatically mail out off the form contents when a form is submitted. And so there are two ways that you can do that. There's probably more than two ways, but there are two easy ways that come to mind. The first one is built right into Alpha Transform, and the second is an integration with Zapier, and I'm going to show you both methods. So let's just pop over here to Alpha Transform. And you'll notice here under Development Options, you will find a section here called Define on Submit Event. So I'm going to just click on that. And in here, I'm allowed to write using JSON notation uh, one of two different types of um, on-submit actions. And I'll show you both of those types. All you have to do is actually just click the little icon on here where it says click here, and it will show you the format for these. So you can either send an email as an action, or you can post data. Or you can do multiple. This is actually an array. If you wanted to have it sent to a couple different people and post, no problem. It shows you all the directions here. What I did uh, was I said the action here is send mail. Oops. So this is actually how I put it together. Mine said send mail. For send to, it said dave at alphasoftware.com. I said the transform, uh, the subject is transform data, and the send format is in HTML. And uh, whenever something is submitted in Transform, I get an email notification of it. Let me just see if I've got another example. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if I've got one handy here that I can show you, but, but it does come through. So go ahead and if you put this into your own account, you, you can get that to work as well. The second way uh, is using Zapier. And we've been over this in, in previous weeks, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail. 
but I'll go through it sort of quickly. If you go into Zapier, uh, now it's actually, there are some built-in integrations. Let me show this to you. Oops, that one's broken. Let me show you the other way. First thing you'll do is you'll get an API key. Um, so I typically use this one. I get an API key that has all of the permissions. And when I click that button, a code appears that I can copy and put into the clipboard, and that's my API key. After that, I go over to zapier.com, and I log in, and it knows who I am. Great. Uh, that's me. And what I do is I create a zap by clicking the Make a Zap button. So now that I'm here in Zapier, Zapier is a third-party service. For simple zaps, they're actually free of charge. For more complicated zaps, or if you're doing teams, or if you're doing very high volumes, you'll need to get a paid account with Zapier. But it's it's a really neat little system to work with, and I, I suggest using it. Um, so let's click on Make a Zap. And then in Zapier, I just need to do two things. I set up a trigger, and that is the action that happens that sets off the whole event. In this case, transform is my trigger. So whenever, an, and there's only one kind of trigger, and that's new form submitted. So I'm going to save and continue. Now, I've already saved, set up an account, actually, to lots of different types of things here. But if I needed to, I could say connect account. And that's where you'll get that dialog box that pops up, and it's going to ask you for your API key, which should still be in the clipboard. So anyway, so moving forward, after that's done, it's going to then ask me for which form is it that I am interested in particular when, you know, when it's submitted. And let's go with that equipment inspection DevCon. That was the one we just did. And then uh, let's say refresh fields. And then I'm going to go continue. And then it's going to say, okay, um, here is some data that you can find, form A and form B. And if you just click on it, it shows you just to make sure you're on the right one. If you recall, that was my fake person, Cindy Tressel, and this is her data that she collected. Uh, I guess she was reviewing two PCs. You can see, sort of see all this in the JSON data. But as we move forward, uh, we then go to continue, and then we choose our action. So we need to, it says right here, your Zap currently lacks an action, so we'll go ahead and click action. And this time we're just gonna choose email. That's one of the built-in ones, and it says send an outbound email. So I'll choose send it out by an email. I can choose two. And this uh, this two field could be data from, from, my, uh, from my list, or it could be hard-coded. Um, so I could just say like Dave at alphasoftware.com, for example. Then I could just paste in the subject, or again, the subject could be customized using form field data. And then I paste the data that I'd like to include in my, um, in the body of the message. So I'd probably grab the inspector name and a few other pieces of data. Now I have actually made a really kind of nice uh, example before. Let me pop over to PowerPoint uh, where I had this all formatted with nice HTML and I was using that for an incident inspection report. Um, so let me show you that real quick because it's you can actually do some really nice stuff in Zapier. Um, Zapier, let me just find it here. I know it's here somewhere. Da, 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 da. I have so many slides. Okay, okay, it's got to be coming up. Oh, I lied. I'll have to show it to you later. Uh, but anyway, uh, I do have a nicely formatted example, which I'll be able to show off later. But anyway, you just uh, enter in uh, what you want in here, and then when it's all done, all you do is you click the on button to turn on the zap. Now, my zap is not configured properly, so it's probably going to complain if it tried to let me turn it on. But uh, So once I fill these in, I can continue. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so that is sending emails, and I've been over mail to, and I've been over if then. So those are really the topics that I wanted to cover today. So let me see if there are any questions out here. Um, so, okay, so uh, question number one is, I'd like to get data from transform into my SQL. Do you have a tutorial for that? Um, I don't have a tutorial for that, but if you want to get a little bit more specific as to what data you'd like to pull, would you like to pull all form data or just from a particular form, I could probably come up with something for you. 
My approach, of course, for that would probably be to do it in XBasic. If I wanted to pull stuff out of Transform and put it into my own MySQL instance, I would use the Transform API to do that. Let me just move some stuff out of the way. So that would be over here in code. Code. And I could, might write a new script or something like that. Let's say an XBasic script. And in this XBasic script, I would rely on uh, pulling data out from the uh, Transform API. And there's a tool built into Alpha that makes it easy to work with that Transform API, and that is the uh, Transform API or API Explorer, which I believe is here. Hang on while I find it. Uh, packages. No. Um, so, oh, here it is. Right, it's right in front of me. <laughs> Open Transform API Explorer. So the API Explorer is cool. It shows you all the different things that the Transform API supports for, it. and one of them, of course, would be like getting getting data. Um, getting data for form instances, getting form definitions. Uh, so let's get data. And in here, you would you'd paste in your API key. And if you wanted to do a field list to include just certain fields from a particular uh, form. So I'm sorry, here you'd enter in your API. I may have already done that. So here I can enter in a form ID, which I would grab from transform itself. I'll show you where to find that. Transform. Let's go back here. Transform. I want to close out my email here. All right. And I'd go here into Designer and I just double click on the form that I want. Actually, I think single click on the form that I want. So let's say we were doing that DevCon, uh, that equipment inspection form. If I clicked on that, I'd find the form ID right there, and I can use that back here in Alpha Anywhere. Okay, and let's do a test. There it is. Okay, great. I had entered my API key before. You do need to paste that up here. So when I do it a test, and I said, okay, I'd like you to give me all of the data coming from this particular form. It shows me the API results. Now, the question is, how would I actually write the code to do that? Well, the answer is I wouldn't actually have to because Alpha has done it for us. I can go over here to this XBasic tab, and it shows me everything that I need, oh, including my API key, <laughs> and uh, to, to pull the data down. So then what you would want to do as you're pulling the data down and putting it into an array or a dot variable uh, is you would write another XBasic, uh, another bit of XBasic to uh, populate your SQL uh, database as you pull the data down from here. Um, I can go into more example if you want to send an email to uh, guides at alphasoftware.com or actually tfservice at alphasoftware.com and I'd be happy to, to flesh out something a little bit more detailed for you. Couple of questions. Um, uh, uh, what type of OS field do you use to save images from Transform if you're going to save them into SQL? Well, interestingly, we actually don't save them in Transform, the images themselves. What we do is we save a reference to a file on the Amazon S3 bucket. So if I went back and showed you what we got in that data, uh, let me go back here to Transform Data Explorer, and we're going to put that form ID back in, you will see, oops, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, right here is my picture. So if you want to, you could save that image reference as a, um, it, 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 simply as a, in a text file, if you wanted to save it that way. On the other hand, if you want to actually pull that data right out, you'll see it's got an extension .jpg. And if you're going to save it inside the database, not always the best thing to do, but you can do it. It does tend to make databases rather large, keeping images in them. Uh, but you would save that as, as a blob field um, or uh, basically in, in your um, database. So let's see, anything else? Oh, someone said, uh, admin housekeeping, how to clear up the completed forms on a device to save them from stacking up? All right, that's a great question. On my phone, I have a whole bunch stacking up. 
because I filled them out. I've never cleared them out. I filled them out on my phone, but I haven't cleared them out. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to pop over here to Transform Central. And I'm going to go to Management Console. And I'm going to choose, uh, again, we are going to choose the equipment inspection form that I was using before. This one here. And here I just have two form instances, so they're not necessarily piling up on my phone, but imagine like I had 50 of these, right? What I can do is I can check one of these, and then I can say prevent the, oops, I can select one of these, what I meant to say, and then I can check the prevent form filler from downloading button, which oddly in this latest release doesn't seem to be there. Let me see what's going on. Uh, prevent. Hmm. Okay, well, I think we've just found a bug. Anyway, uh, when we fix this, which will probably be a little later on today, uh, you're going to want to click on the prevent form filler from downloading option here. And what that means is that the next time you refresh the forms on your device, is it, will, it simply won't download, so it won't clutter up your phone. Um, so are there any other questions? It looks like not. Remember, you could always reach me, though, at tfservice at alphasoftware.com. Hey, thanks, everyone, for showing up. Thanks for asking questions, and thanks for using Transform. Hope to see you next Tuesday at the next Transform Tuesday. And for you Alpha Anywhere folks, I hope to see you at tomorrow's Wednesday webinar. Take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.